Guys, are we live? We are we live? I'm streaming on uh, my brand new computer, and the last 30 minutes has been me trying to get it set up for streaming. So hopefully, you guys can hear me. Hopefully, you guys can see me okay. And hopefully, we're gonna have a great time today watching the unveil of the Nissan Armada. Say refreshed. Not expecting a redesign here. Uh, not for probably three more years or so. Uh, for the patrol, the, the Armada, as well as the QX80. And then, of course, we have the Nissan Kicks, which, fingers crossed, guys, fingers crossed, uh, we get an e-power version. It looks like you guys can see me, hopefully hear me. So, Good. You, Pauline Weinberger says, we see and hear you. Thanks, Pauline. Thanks for coming out. Kyle's in the house. The good man's here, Cheyenne's here, uh, Goku just saying's here, Todd Boley, Todd Boley's represented. If they offered it on the SR top trim only and the base pro pilot that doesn't use nav, maybe the Bumble, I think they could be done. They got ACC, the Versa for $500 with heat seats. I must, oh, I think you're talking about uh, pro pilot which I, I missed out on that. So it looks like you, you were answering someone else's, else's question, Todd. Um, MPG's in the house. Sykes of Pops here from good old uh, Puerto Rico, I believe. That's where you're from. Mick, Mike Mike or Mick Mick is here. Arham. Samurai Cam. What's going on? Good morning. Hopefully everyone's had a good good morning so far. And uh, yeah, just trying to figure out if, I mean, the camera is definitely in a new spot for me. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll give you guys a, like a, a studio tour at some point in time. I'm not going to be in the studio for much longer. Uh, come March, I'll be moving back down to Florida. <sighs> Excited. I have to thank you guys for that. Moving back to where my wife is from, where we both want to be. And I couldn't have done it without the support of the luxurious fleet. So thank you guys for... Just be in there. I am. I'm super safe. Do I look like I'm unsafe? I'm. I'm extraordinarily safe. I'm doing well. Hopefully, you're safe as well. Uh, any expectations? I just want to see E Power come to America. I want to see their hybrid powertrain. Uh, I want to drive it. I want to give you my impressions on it. That's for sure. And I'm pretty cold, so I'm going to get. A, I'm going to get a jacket. It's, it's right. It's just just over there so just a second oh i think i got i think i got it to work good 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 you should play b beam ng beaming drive Maybe. Uh, so this computer is definitely going to be better for gaming than my last one. I'm s I am still can't buy a new graphics card because they're just, they're just not out there. Um, they're either being scalped or you have to wait in line at a micro center, which I don't have a micro center. Getting a new graphics card is going to be rough, but this, this computer's processor is, is incredible, which I had to settle for last year's processor because the new ones are just as unavailable as the graphics cards. Anyways, guys, that mic picked up a lot of noise. That's right. Hopefully you guys feel like you're right next to me watching some unveils today. Uh, by the way, I have a second live stream today. This is probably the busiest day I've had in a long time. I made a video this morning. I don't even think I, I haven't even up, uploaded it yet. But it's, it's kind of the uh, simmering down of all the information of the MDX reveal, which we're getting later. So I, I kind of know everything. All, I, I do know everything about it. But I can't say anything about it because I'm under embargo. But anyways, that video is done. I just got to upload it. That will go live while I'm live streaming. So if you guys aren't able to watch the live stream of the MDX later today, uh, 1.30 Central Standard Time. 2.30 Eastern time or 11. Yeah, you guys, you guys can do math. I don't have to name every time zone in the world. But anyways, uh, if you can't make the live stream, what I'm trying to say is I'll have a video up, uh, like a eight, 15 to 18 minute video. 
um, when the embargo ends, so you guys can watch it whenever you get a chance. So, Obaid, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. Alexis is doing good now, says a good man. Mubarak was lucky to get one at MSRP. Oh, an Armada? Congrats on your Armada, Armada, if that's what you're talking about. It's a shame had to wait on my build. The prices are too inflated. Yeah, for, for uh, computers. That's why I settled on a, um, well, settled. It's still phenomenal CPU, a 3950X. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I'll just say that. But I'm, I'm actually bottlenecked when it comes to my video editing. And if I game, which I don't game very much, but it's something I like to feature on the channel a little bit more. Um, but what I'm trying to say is new CPU. It's not exactly the one I wanted. It's still overkill for a lot of situations. A graphics card. You can't buy a graphics card. That's my bottleneck in my system right now is my 5700X. Sykes of Pop 78 and sunny there well it's 34 here and um oh cool my wife just texted me my uh gaming controller my uh, gaming controller for the pc just arrived so i'll be able to play racing games yes would a would a steering wheel be more ideal of course but i'm not going to buy a 300 hundred dollar racing wheel at this point in time maybe in the future but i'm i got other things to do right now than to to play on steering wheels Matthew says, your father's trying to buy an old Toyota Fortuner. Where are you at in the world? Obviously not in the North America, because we don't get them here. Just two minutes left. Two minutes left. Any more news on the Lexus TX or LQ? I think the LQ is done. I don't, I don't believe they're going to make a production version of it. I think they're just going to simmer down all that technology, all the ideas they had for it, into the Lexus RX. The RX is their best-selling vehicle. Uh, just hopefully they come out with an F version to compete against the, like, you know, the RSQ8 and stuff like that. Fingers crossed. We'll have to see. We'll have to wait. But I, I really do think the LQ is on hold or just canceled altogether. Uh, the TX, though, is going, well, it's trademarked. That's all we know. Who knows? That, that vehicle we saw uh, yesterday when they were teasing those camouflage ve vehicles. Uh, with the new hybrid and electric technologies. Guys, isn't it crazy? We finally saw like our first electric Lexus, and I'm not counting the UX300E, but like a fully electric SUV for Lexus. We saw one. Don't know what it is. Could be the TX, it could be an RZ, could be an RX, that's my gut feeling. Could be an NX, some people are even saying GX. People really just want a new GX. I, I really don't think the new GX is coming. All right. Oh, you're in India? Yep. Yep. Good luck with the uh, fortune or, uh, search for you and your family. Less than a minute. How about the IS500? I'm feeling pretty good about that coming. I'm fairly sure that if it does come, it'll have the V8 instead of the twin turbo V6. We'll have to wait and see. What are my thoughts on the new GV70? Well, I haven't had, I've been making videos. I briefly took a peek at it. Uh, I might still have that tab up. I do, I still have that tab up. So maybe after, if you guys want to stick around, after the Nissan reveals on the Kicks and the Armada, uh, we'll talk about the GV70, but I'm happy that it's getting the bigger displacement powertrains uh, compared to, let's say the G70. So I'm really, really happy about uh, what, I, what I've seen so far, but I really haven't had a chance to look at it because I've been making videos, getting ready for the live stream. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's prime time now, guys. It's prime time. Hi, I'm Allison Witherspoon, Vice President and U.S. Chief Marketing Officer for Nissan. As we approach the end of 2020, there's never been a more important or more exciting time for our company. Nissan's corporate purpose is driving innovation to enrich people's lives. And it's our goal to give our customers the best that Nissan has to offer, from our shop at home tools through to the ownership experience. 
In May, we announced our global transformation plan called Nissan Next. Nissan Next is all about focusing our efforts to set the company on a solid path to long-term sustainability and to push even harder doing what we've always done best, thrilling customers with innovative, exciting vehicles. While this transformation includes substantial changes to how we run our business and to our corporate culture, for our customers, it's about where the rubber meets the road. Nissan's vehicle lineup. We promised 10 new vehicle introductions in 20 months, with many of them in showrooms by the end of 2021. And we are delivering on that promise as we continue moving forward. We launched Nissan Next with a short video tease previewing 10 new global models from A to Z. Within weeks, we were off and running with the reveal of the all new 2021 Rogue Crossover. The Rogue is now on sale nationwide and is wowing customers with design, safety, performance, technology, and family-friendly cabin features that exceed expectations. In July, we revealed the first A in the A to Z video, the all-electric Nissan Aria crossover. Then in September, we followed with the Z, the Z Proto, which previews the next chapter in the iconic Z story. And today, we are excited to show you the next two models coming very soon from Nissan. The new 2021 Armada and Kicks are the bookends there to they Nissan's are. strong lineup of crossovers and SUVs. With the all new Rogue, recently refreshed Rogue Sport and Murano, and another vehicle coming soon, the Nissan showroom another will vehicle. have one of the freshest and most diverse Maybe the SUV new frontier? lineups anywhere. Waiting and just like we delivered with the 2020 Sentra and the 2021 Rogue, these new models bring a strong combination of design, safety, leading edge technology, and premium refinement that equals unexpected value to our customers. Now, let's take a look at the new 2021 Armada. Digging the music, I'm not gonna lie. That synth music. Thanks, Allison. You've outlined a promising future for the company with an exciting lineup of new products with technology that will exceed our customers' expectations. I'm proud to be part of it. I'm Paul Hawson, Director of Product Planning at Nissan North America. I'm here today to give you quick tours of the new 2021 Armada and Kicks, starting with Armada, the flagship of Nissan's dynamic SUV and crossover lineup. The new 2021 Armada is made for adventurous families who expect it all. Authentic premium styling, rugged capability, advanced safety and technology with comfort for up to eight people. And that's exactly what the new Armada delivers. The ability to provide limitless driver confidence through its powerful design and full-size capability. Let's start with the most prominent features, then take a closer look at the heart I of this I do like beast. the new headlights. First, the 2021 Armada has a rugged yet refined new exterior. The new, more squared and chiseled body includes redesigned hood, front fenders, bumpers, a grill, and powerful new headlight and taillight designs. I mean, what's the point of buying a QX80 at this plus point? A blackout right? treatment we call Armada Midnight Edition. Pure premium coupled That's pretty with a sinister look and feel. That Midnight's nice. The 2021 Armada is the first model to wear the new Nissan Next logo. It's Why would cool. you? Inside, would you guys passenger buy Armada a QX80 a with this new Armada? Comfortable and modern interior. No way. The There's cabin no way. is library quiet. All the better to this hear your playlist This looks way nicer, especially with that new Apple screen. CarPlay. And the seating and storage flexibility is designed for family members of all ages and sizes. Armada's advanced technology includes an all-new 12.3-inch display, a 7-inch color digital gauge cluster, wireless charging, and Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay, now let's dive a little deeper into Armada's unmatched power and all-terrain capabilities. Armada's powerful 5.6-liter endurance V8 engine features a best-in-class standard 400 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque. With that power, Armada provides a best-in-class standard towing of 8,500 pounds. For 2021, Armada adds a new trailer brake controller and trailer sway control, giving you added confidence when you take to the open road towing heavier toys like boats, campers, or horse trailers. Armada remains an off-road beast with a robust frame and an all-around independent suspension that offers I wish she was wearing like an ugly Christmas and articulation sweater. during adventurous driving. 
The new Armada's purposeful technology includes standard Nissan Safety Shield 360, which provides all-around detection and protection for an adventurous family road trip to a simple drive to pick up dinner, and everything in between. The new Armada is available in three well-equipped grades, SV, SL, and Platinum. So to sum it up, best in class standard 400 horsepower, best in class standard 8,500 pounds of towing, the largest in class 12.3 inch center screen, all wrapped in authentic adventure style and family comfort. The 2021 Nissan Armada comes to market in January, a great way oh, to celebrate January a new already. year of well, family adventures. It's just a refresh. Now let's take a look so. at the 2021 kicks. E-power, fingers crossed. It's my, my Mass Effect dance club music right there. The 2021 Nissan Kicks takes a far different approach to adventure than the Armada. Armada was born of Nissan's authentic SUV heritage and DNA, including the desert racing victories captured around the world by the original Nissan Patrol and Pathfinder. Kicks, by contrast, gains its inspiration from the beaches of Brazil, with its original concept developed by Nissan Design America in Rio de Janeiro. As an urban compact SUV, Kix has built a solid following throughout the world as a crossover of choice for young multicultural singles and couples living their pre-family lives. For 2021, Kix ups the desirability factor with enhanced exterior styling, upgraded technology, and additional standard safety items. So let's take a closer look. The first thing you'll notice is the Kix energetic styling. The youthful redesign features a new V-Motion front grille, new wheel design, along with new front and rear bumpers that are accentuated by bold LED headlights, fog lights, and taillights. Kix continues to offer a range of new, vibrant colors and two-tone paint schemes, allowing for more personalization. In fact, through the use of colors and an array of available accessories, Kix is one of the most customizable vehicles in the segment. Inside the new Kix offers smart and stylish interior with a new customizable 8-inch touchscreen display additional USB ports, new seat materials, and more premium finishes, along with an available new center console, heated seats, heated steering wheel, and more. Kicks again has music lovers covered with the available Bose Personal Plus audio system that brings premium sound right to the driver's headrest. Technology has been upgraded with standard Nissan Safety Shield 360 and available intelligent cruise control and auto brake hold. The elevated driving experience for the urban agility of Kicks includes new four-wheel disc brakes and an electronic parking brake. And in keeping with the Nissan Next philosophy of offering technology above segment expectations, Kicks is available with Nissan Connect services, a suite of convenience and security features that provides assistance when owners need it most. Kicks is perfect for owners who want a vehicle that matches their distinct <laughs> personality as they seek out adventures big or small. And best of all, Kix is a great value. So there you have it, two great vehicles, two ends of Nissan's SUV and crossover lineup, and two dynamic examples of what you can expect from Nissan Next. And now, back to Allison. So that's a quick early look at the new 2021 Armada and Kix, two great new additions to the Nissan lineup of crossovers and SUVs. They'll join the all-new Rogue in Nissan showrooms in early 2021 with a combination of style, safety, performance, and features that are sure to thrill even customers with the highest expectations. Even with the new models we've already shared, there is more to come. Watch for what's next in January when we reveal all new versions of two of Nissan's most iconic nameplates. We are recreating it's be the frontier, Nissan, right? transforming our business and products what else? to be the best so we, we have can the frontier. be for our customers. Thank they gotta you talk for joining about it us then. What else? What's the other vehicle going to be? Uh, Highland? Uh, but what, what is it? Nissan Pathfinder? Do you think it's gonna, we're going to get... The, I think it'll be the Pathfinder. The more I'm thinking about it. Uh, should be Pathfinder. Yeah, Frontier and Pathfinder. I almost called it Highlander. Same, same segment, different brand. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you guys want to stick around a little bit, we're going to go over the GV70. And I haven't had ch a chance really to look at it. So here we are. We're going to look at it together while I got your guys' attention. It was just unveiled today. Uh, kind of like the MDX is doing a 
a, an official unveil today for the production model. And that's what we're going to do here. So midsize urban SUV Genesis GV70 debuts online. Uh, it must have either been really early this morning or like really, really early this morning because it probably unveiled for Korea first, I would believe. So it could have been like 1 a.m. or something. All right. We could watch the video, but we're we're gonna we're gonna pick out the juicy details here. Um, Genesis CarPay, what the heck is that? Fingerprint authentication system that is connected to a simple in-car payment service called Genesis CarPay. Advanced rear occupant alert based on radar sensors. Okay, well that's that's just safety. Genesis CarPay. We're gonna have to find out. I'll, I'll find more of that. I, I, since we're talking about it, CarPay. What is this? All right. The GV70 is groundbreaking biometric technology. Is its fingerprint authentic authentication system connected to a simple in-car payment surface called Genesis CarPay, as well as the vehicle's advanced rear occupant alert, which is based on. Okay, I just read that. Fingerprint authentication system, which is connected to a new simple in-car pay, okay, utilizes fingerprint authentication technology, improving convenience and securing or security by allowing drivers to make simple in-car payments with their fingerprint. What do you, who needs to buy something in their car? What? Uh, GV70 drivers also have the option to utilize fingerprint authentication and valet mode, which prevents any person personal information such as their home address etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so you can block out the authentication fingerprint mode and valet mode guys you might have to ha help me understand this maybe i'm too old uh, maybe i'm not james bond to understand this either if a driver starts using the fingerprint authentication the gv70 will automatically adjust various settings to suit their preferences includes adjusting the positions of the driver's seat, steering wheel, heads-up display, as well as updating the navigation's recent destinations. That makes sense to me. The in-car purchases, what the heck? Is that so you, Alexa? But like, if you have Alexa, I probably just triggered her somewhere in my house. Can't she already buy stuff for you in the car just using your voice? Like, what's the point? I don't know. Does, is a car a vending machine as well? That's a possibility. Whoa, what the heck? Okay, rear occupant alert. Utilize the sensors mounted in the vehicle to detect passengers in the rear seat and alerts the driver of their presence in multiple phases. Not only are they capable of sensing when passengers in the rear move their limbs, but they can also detect small respiratory movements near the passenger's chest, allowing the GV70 to alert drivers in, case, in cases when a child or sleeping infant has been left in their seat. What is, what's happening to our world, guys? where we need the cars to remind us if we left a kid in the car. What's it going to do when you leave your dog in the car? It's going to like self-destruct. It won't know what to do with itself. What is happening? Guys, I might need to take a break and read the comments for a little bit. Maybe pay for gas. Okay, that makes sense. Maybe you pay for gas in Korea through a fingerprint sensor inside the car so you don't have to swipe your card. That, that makes sense to me. Okay. To pay for food. Maybe in a drive through Okay, that, that, that can make some sense. You could pay for parking that way. All right. Maybe, maybe in like a, uh, where they don't have a manned parking lot. It's, you know, with just the, the gates. You can just like, Fingerprint somewhere in your car and it, it works like interesting. Korea car pay is used at gas stations. Adrian, thank you so much for clearing that up. Okay. Obviously that doesn't make 
any sense in America at this point in time. We just don't have any infrastructure to support that. Okay. All right. Let's the least the less biometrics in my cars, the better. Uh, says I, I missed. Uh, says Lego Rick Deckard. Yeah, I agree. Has a snacks dispenser in the glove box that you can use a fingerprint. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Genesis will refill it weekly and spy on you. Uh, might be so you don't accidentally buy something with your voice and you don't have to pick up your phone to pay for things. Yeah, but Alexa's wireless. In your car. Okay, tolls. That makes a lot of sense. Tolls make sense. But... Tolls are already figured out because they either, either map it to your license plate or you have something in your window to if you have like a toll pass. At least that's how they do it in Florida. A drone will come up and drop off the food. Uh, so, okay, so you can pay for tolls in Korea that way as well. Tolls, 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 yep. Okay. All right. I think we've cleared that up, but it, the, the really strange biometric scanning that we're getting in the backseat of the GV70 is weird. Freaking weird, man. Okay. Let's go, let's go to the most important things for me anyways. Uh, it's right here. The engines, guys. Engines. The G70s getting the carryover engines from the previous generation, I believe. Uh, the Stinger also has the 3.3 liter turbo still, but I believe it may have gotten the upgrade 2.5 uh, four-cylinder turbo for certain markets. Anyways, um, we're getting the three and a half liter turbo V6, 380 PS, so upper 370s PS, and the 300 horsepower turbo four cylinder. Thank God, I'm really excited about that. Um, you can only get this. Well, diesel is going to be for Korea, maybe Australia. I don't know if you guys even have Genesis there, um, but it'll be for certain markets for sure. Uh, but all wheel drive is. You can only get the, the 3.5T in all-wheel drive. You can't get it in a rear-wheel drive, which is surprising to me. That's, that's weird. So. Should have a 10-speed auto. That would be my guess. Uh, except they don't talk about the transmission at all in this article. At least under the word transmission. So you get 19 inch wheels uh, with a 3.5T. The other two have 18 inch wheels. So you do get a sport package, which, which we already had images on the sport package. So that's not really a surprise. Uh, five interior colors, black, black and vanilla beige. Uh, so a blue and Green two-tone? That'd be interesting to see. We'll, we'll flip through the pictures in a little bit. Uh, a blue and brown two-tone. A slate gray and burgundy two-tone. Man, they're going all out with these contrasting colors. Uh, okay, so... Sport Package also gets exclusive colors. Uh, blue, black, and black and red. Is there anything else you guys want to uh, know about the GV? I guess I'll just go over the highlights real quick. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Talking about the athletic and urban design. Fired by beauty of white space on the interior with careful consideration to balancing state-of-the-art technology, personal space. Well, they do a good job with the interior and exterior designs. Um, selection of good colors and interior options okay first genesis suv to launch 
to apply a launch control system for dynamic driving and offer new level of driving safety with state of the art, blah, blah, blah. New infotainment systems. All right, let's, let's flip through the pictures here. Wow. Can they make that any smaller? <laughs> let's see if I can make this bigger for you guys. Not really. Okay, let's see if I can do full screen. Nope. All right, whatever. Small pictures is what we have to work with right now. Maybe I can move this up. Nope. <laughs> I tried. All right, we'll go through the really small pictures. Maybe I'll move my face. Nope, that's not my face. All right. It looks like they did uh, the product, all the product pictures in Iceland. Iceland. Uh, there's the sport model, the larger front end, the larger grill. So you, you see that there's plastic here, which looks pretty good. If you have the sport model, you have mesh here and a little bit bigger grill, or at least more mesh at the bottom. What do I think about the Mazda CX-30 Turbo? I haven't driven it yet, but I think it's exciting. Um, it gives even less incentive to the Mazda 3 Turbo at this point because they're roughly the same price. So, uh, move my stupid face. Yeah, it's already moved. <laughs> uh, okay, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving on these pictures. I wanna see the interior. I love the dual exhaust. I love these fat circles for the dual exhaust. Love that. And guys, isn't it sad as, as we move more towards electrification, exhaust tips are gonna be a thing of the design past. Don't wanna think about it. I'm sure there's some brands I'll do fake exhaust tips on electric cars just to be stupid. Uh, here we go. Let's keep moving. Looks good. Looks good. Not a big fan of the wheels, as you guys know. Wait, is that all the pictures? <gasps> no. No, really? That was all the pictures. All right, so we're going to have to skim through this video. to see the interior. All right, here we go. Space. I'm gonna take off audio because copyright strikes, you know. You guys know. Good, good ambient lighting. It's got the mountain range uh, armrest thing and it's also, I think, on the speakers. It's a pretty cool outline. Love the new screen, like how like low profile it is and it's like why so i just i hate how screens are so tall they can be so tall in cars i like how they did a really wide screen that's not too tall love the seating they do a really good job with the seats wheels are over designed 100 percent agree Looks classy, man. Looks good. Looks good. You know, I'm telling you, it's 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 frustrating because they're their uh, Genesis is their own worst enemy. And what do I mean by that? Uh, is they are producing some really compelling cars in the luxury segment. You get, it's arguably you get more for that vehicle for the price than any other uh, competing luxury models. The problem is, is their non-existent dealer network. And I can't, I say this all the time, but it's, it's true. Guys, their sales are a complete laughing stock here in the States. It's, it's despicable. And it's because they can't produce an amazing experience for their luxury customers. You have to, yeah, you have to slum it out with the people buying a twenty thousand uh, dollar, whatever, Hyundai, at the dealership. And they want to have a higher quality experience, and Genesis is trying everything they can to force dealers to separate their showrooms, to have a different showroom, to block it off, to have specific um, customer service reps or their luxury division easier said than done it's it's hard to change a culture of a deal let's say you're 
yeah it coming from the because i worked for a luxury dealership the culture there is vastly different than the culture at a standard store a domestic like store like kia and hyundai it's totally different culture between a a luxury store, how they treat customers, how they go the extra mile, how the cars, even when it just comes to detailing the cars, it's night and day. And it's night and day between other luxury dealerships. But even then, the quality of detail on prepping the cars, taking care of customers, it's just so much different compared to a normal dealership. The product is amazing. And on paper, anyways, the designs look good. The powertrains are good. Uh, there's a lot of thought that goes into the design of these cars. And the execution of them seems to be really, really good. They just need to find a way to, and it's going to be a long time. Because we're going to look at, we're going to go to, uh, carfigures.com. Whoops. We're going to look at uh, Genesis. Where's Genesis? Here they are. Stop playing that video. All right. Zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. 2016, they sold 7,000 cars. 17, they sold 20,000 cars. 2018, they sold half the amount of cars from one year to the next. Which is not hard to do when you're only selling 20,000 at your best. 2018 was 10,000. 2019 was 21,000. Their best year ever. Okay, so step in the right direction. 2020, guys, is going to be rough. Uh, because we, if we look, I can get the calculator out. Total sales, U.S. Statistics, statistics by quarter. Uh, here we go. I'll add up the first three quarters. We have, okay, 3955, 3585, and 3745. 11, they've sold 11,000 cars after third quarter. Let's say they have their best quarter of the year. They sell 4,000 more cars. They've only sold 15,000 cars. And that's with the GV80 being out this year. I don't know how available it is. Uh, and the G80. The G80 was just redesigned. So the GV80, brand new product. GV70 is going to be coming, obviously, early next year. That should help sales in theory. Um, are, you guys, are you guys fighting in the stream right now? I don't want to have to kick people out. Goodness gracious. Guys, why can't we just get along? Just respect each other's opinions. Easier said than done. <laughs> um, Genesis sales will increase dramatically now that the GV80 is on lots. Hopefully. Hopefully. Their margins are great. That's a fact. They legit bring the GV80 to me the other day. That's good. That's good. That's good. Where are you at, uh, Satvik? Are you here in the States? Are you somewhere else? But I need, I probably need to stop streaming soon so I can have some <laughs> uh, longevity for the second stream today, which is going to be on the Acura MDX, which is probably a little bit more exciting than this stream. Um, definitely more exciting than this stream. I'll just say that, but we'll have to wait for that. Can't give you guys insider information until the embargo ends, and that will be at 1.30. So, El Tao, how are you? Ohio dealer, Dublin. Ohio dealer. Okay, so they brought the GV8. That's good. That's as expected uh, for a luxury dealership to bring vehicles to you. Um, I can't wait for Acura Stream. Yeah, it's going to be fun.
<laughs> uh, Morsa, Morsa says, Nissan, Genesis, Mazda, I don't care, but someone needs to rebadge the Gemini and send it to North America. Couldn't, couldn't agree more there. Dallin Lee. Dallin Lee's... <laughs> He's so generous. Uh, thank you so much for the donation um, for the Singaporean dollars. Appreciate that. Uh, let's go Acura, he says. Well, uh, do you get Acura in Singapore? I would assume you do. Let me know. Do you, get, do you get Acura down there? I could do a quick search. I know they get them in China and North America. That, and maybe, maybe like, uh, like UAE or something. Let me know if you guys have Acura there in Singapore. Bronx Task Force, how's it going? Jimny does need to come to the United States, 100%. <laughs> MPG, just do a marathon stream all day. You're the Iron Man of YouTubers. Well, in some ways I am. In some ways, I'm not going to dispute that. But I have a family and I have a life outside of the camera that you guys see me in front of all the time. That, uh, and I need to eat. I haven't eaten today. I think that would be a good idea to eat at some point in time. You guys surely don't want to see me eat on, on stream. That would be just sad. Moshi T says, Yo, Kirk, please make more videos on the new LX and TX. Well, I mean, there's. if you want to know more about videos on the LX, uh, just watch my Land Cruiser videos. That's really all the information we have to go by at this point is all the rumors and speculation on the Land Cruiser 300. And the TX, that's pure speculation. The only thing we know is that it's, it's uh, trademarked in certain markets. We don't know anything else about it. I could, I could make a whole video sharing on what they could do with it but doesn't mean it's going to happen uh dallin just throwing throwing me so much love saying uh they don't have acura in singapore they just have honda that's you know i'm sure you have uh the honda legend there though that's pretty badass we don't get that here they just canceled acura rlx which was a, a rebadge version of the legend. Gaganbot 360 I'm the best streamer and car reviewer online. Well, thank you. I To even be considered to be up there with some of the amazing cha channels is definitely, uh, I don't know, something I don't feel like I deserve quite yet in time. But we'll get there, guys. Once I move back to Florida, I'm telling you, nice weather all the time, easy access to cars. My car reviews will go through the roof really i'll be doing them much more often uh it's gonna be fun i don't want to swamp myself because so much of my channel is is news and updating you guys on that news and giving you my thoughts and my experience in in the industry but i do enjoy reviewing cars and i feel like that gives me a lot more credibility for both ends um my news end of the things gives me credibility when I'm reviewing cars and vice versa when I'm reviewing cars. That experience helps me in front of the camera when I'm giving you news updates, giving me a lot better formulated opinions and thoughts on vehicles. So thank you so much. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Nissan has absolutely beautiful vehicles, but their CVT kill it. Yeah, I, th I think their de designs are pretty good, especially their Infinity products are Gorgeous cars. Food sustains life, don't die. There's more. There's more to life than food. Than PG. More to life. Uh, Kevbot, do you get to drive any of the cars that dealerships used to work at? Uh, yeah, Kevbot. So I got to drive, I don't know, hundreds if not thousands of cars when I worked at, at, at the dealership for a couple of years. So tons of like, especially with Lexus, because obviously if you guys didn't know, I worked as a Lexus master consultant, uh, sales consultant for two years, or really, really good uh, dealership here in Omaha. 
And the amount of butt time and hands-on time I have with Lexus vehicles, that will always be my specialty. And Toyota, to some extent, because they share a lot. The same company in a lot of ways. But um, I also sold used cars. So whether it was a Tesla or a Cadillac or an Infiniti or a Kia, like I sat in several cars every day and oftentimes cars I'd never sat in before just about every single day. So it was, it was a great experience and helped me build up my, I don't know, my knowing, my knowledge base for, for this channel. So yeah, they do need to get rid of the CVT, 100% agree. What's my take on the 2021 BMW 7er? 7 Series? I don't know much about the new 7 Series, if that's what you're asking. Tim, see you later. Thanks for stopping out. The Kicks is now the same with the one in Japan and India. More than likely as well as the one in Southeast Asia. Uh, the difference is, is we don't get the e-power one like they unveiled in Thailand and Japan and things like that, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, Acura MDX, Kirk Signature Series Type S. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would buy a, a vehicle spec out by you, dude. Don't... Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe when I get like more like Scotty Kilmer or the straight pipes or something when I have millions of viewers. The auto auto manufacturers, maybe like Lexus will be like Kirk Kreifel's edition and kind of like how, um, what's his face? Peter McKinnon. He's a huge, uh, if you guys don't know Peter McKinnon, he's a huge YouTuber has millions of subscribers. He has his own like camera filters um, named after him. Peter Peter McKinnon edition. So there's a possibility that, you know, maybe one of the manufacturers reach out to me one day as the channel grows. Uh, Antoine Tran, good morning. How's everyone doing? Todd Bully, I found your channel through your Miata RF review. Oh, love my reviewing style. Thanks, man. Thanks. Try my review style is a work in progress and to be honest, since I review so infrequently at this point in time, I'm still trying to find my unique style to reviewing. Um, I take a lot from CarWow. I really, really admire CarWow. That his type of reviewing speaks really, really directly to me. Whereas like Savage Geese, I, I enjoy his like his insights. I don't really enjoy his review styles per se. But I enjoy his his knowledge, his opinions, as well as um, his cinematography is really, really good. And I've learned a lot and been inspired a lot from his channel as well. Uh, so I kind of try to find a certain things that I like from different YouTubers uh, and try to incorporate it in my reviews. So, yeah. Steve C. Haykirk, which EV vehicle... Uh, present or forth, forthcoming do you feel is a home run uh, are you talking about battery electric vehicles or are you talking about hybrids I think the RAV4 Prime is a home run the availability of it is not so much at this point in time in terms of pure EV what would be a home run uh, Porsche Taycan Tycon, however you want to say it. Porsche Tycon, to me, is gorgeous. It'd be worth every penny. I would buy that over a Tesla Model S if money wasn't an issue. So, uh, I also think that e-tron, the Audi e-trons, are very, very compelling. I think they do a really good job with that. Um, I haven't driven one yet. I've seen one, been really, really close to one at the dealership. Uh, and they're gorgeous, but I just can't wait for Lexus to do it or some of the luxury, um, you know, Asian automakers to get into the full electric, especially Lexus because their vehicles are so, so, so quiet, so quiet. Electrification is the perfect fit for Lexus to, to complete them, in my opinion. 
um, it really does well with their persona, their identity. Didn't the Armada just get updated? It did. Uh, this is from Bo. Did they? Should they update the Pathfinder first? Significant. Well, the Armada is just a refresh. It's easy for them to just change the lights, the bumpers, the interior, just a little bit, tweak it. Um, same thing with the kicks. That was just a refresh. It looks. I think it looks. The kicks looks pretty good, guys. Not a bad looking little crossover. Um, but the Pathfinder is going to be on a new platform. I believe a new platform, but it's going to be completely redesigned from the ground up. Nine speed transmission, people are saying. Uh, hopefully they don't CVT it. And hopefully they don't, they don't continue to put the CVT in its brother, the QX60 from Infinity. Man. I need Dawes and Rice Balls is here. That's good. Well, good to see you, man. Um, I'll probably stop streaming here in a little bit. Again, I have a second stream today at 1.30 Central Time on the Acura MDX. It's going to be a lot of fun. Sapphic says I'll be bigger than those YouTubers one day. I don't know if that's a goal of mine. You know, I want to. I would love to have a million subscribers. That's, of course, any YouTuber's goal and dream. Um, but I'm not. I'm by nature extremely competitive person. I played so many sports growing up, and was in sales business. I've been trying to dial back on the competitiveness. I don't look at any other YouTube channels hardly at all anymore, unless it's purely for education or what can I learn from them. Um, there was a while where I was checking other YouTube channels and it's, it's almost like a, it's a form of motivation, but it's not very pure because I, I, you can easily get jealous over other channels, um, and just get in a bad mood because you're like, oh, that person's growing faster than me. Why am I not? You know? So I try not to compare myself too much with other channels. You know, I'm just trying to provide the best information on Japanese and Korean autos and now I talk a ton about EVs as well because just for obvious reasons. It's, it's a part of the future, and that gets me excited. Um, covering American autos, I've thought about doing it on the channel. doesn't get me excited, so why cover something? So I think my headphones just turned off, which is fine. Uh, why cover something that you're not passionate about? Same thing. I mean, there are some European autos that, I, that have some interest in um, of course, the exotics, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. Who doesn't like those? Um, Cohen Nigseg as well. You know, that could be on the channel in the future. Not going to say it's not. Uh, I do have a, a soft spot for Porsche and Volvo. Uh, even though Volvo is Chinese, some people don't want me to cover Chinese vehicles. Some people are killing for, for me to cover Chinese vehicles because it's Asian autos, but there's a lot of... Uh, political implications whenever you cover anything Chinese. So I'm going to try to stay away from them for a while um, until it's inevitable, which is the way it is. They're like Mordor. And uh, what else? Yeah, I'm sure I'm missing some other automakers, big automaker companies, but keep it simple. Keep it to Asian autos, Korean, Japanese. I get really passionate about them. It's easy for me to talk about them. I have a lot of knowledge especially with Toyota and Lexus, and it's just fun for me. I'm so blessed that I get to talk to you guys about car. It's crazy. It's a dream. It's a dream come true. SGD, did you just throw me? Did you just throw me another 50 Singaporean dollars? Goodness gracious. He says, it's the facts and statistics that I provide that draws him in. Kind of gives me the opportunity to form my own opinion. Well, thanks. Hopefully, hopefully I, I don't influence anyone's opinion too much. I try not, you know, Scotty's very condemning <laughs> on certain automakers um, and certain engines and things like that. And his opinions are totally valid um, because he's been in the industry so long. He knows what cars are junk and what experience he's had personally with failing components. Um, I try to stay neutral. Try to stay neutral. I think CarWow does a really, uh, Matt Watson does a really good job of staying neutral. Um, giving the facts, not giving too much uh, personal opinion, but 
you got to have a little personality. Otherwise, you're, you'll just turn into more of a robot. And some people like that because Alex on autos is a phenomenal YouTuber. He's, he's like data from Star Trek. He, know, he knows every single number about every single vehicle. Um, but in doing so, you give up a little bit about the opinions, the personality end of things. Um, so that's the amazing thing about just people is that you can have a thousand different successful car YouTuber channels and they could all be vastly different just because of the different personalities and the different styles they have. So I'm glad that, you know, you guys appreciate my style and my take on on the amazing vehicles that we have in this world. So Chazzy says you can't grow if I don't do European and American. That's not true. I'm still growing. I'm still growing a lot, actually. Um, I might not grow substantially if I don't cover the American and the European. I'm never going to rule it out at this point in time. I just it doesn't get me excited. Uh, so Bo Bo Sang says uh, most other channels just review vehicles coming out, but not mention where the brands are going. That's very true. Or they don't mention the sales numbers or just kind of like the market perspective. So the problem with some exotics is that their technology sometimes doesn't trickle down to vehicles most could own. Yeah, it's true. Where's the new Nissan Pathfinder, Jesus? That's going to be uh, unveiled in January uh, with the Frontier. That's my guess. They said they're unveiling two new vehicles for Nissan in January. It's got to be the Frontier and Pathfinder. If not, it's a complete fail on their part. Uh, so <laughs> if Nissan doesn't want to fail, they need to give us more information on both of those vehicles as soon as possible. That's just next month. So Scotty wants Tesla to make 94 Celicas. I don't think so because Tesla would not be able to make a 94 Celica properly. Premium finish shows gloss black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, gloss black, it's it's hit or miss. It really depends on personal opinions. I think it looks good, but in practicality, it can be a nightmare. Scotty's the best. Scotty legit because he keep it 100%. I 100% samurai. A lot of people dog on Scotty because he's just this kind of unique personality, but he's always himself. 100% he's always real. And... I appreciate them. He's mastered the YouTube clickbait algorithm. There's no doubt about it, but he backs it up and he's always entertaining. He's arguably one of the most, if not the most entertaining uh, car YouTuber out there. You know, he talks so much with his hands. He gets so animated. He's got his, he's always got the glasses on. No one really knows if Scotty has eyeballs or not. Like mad respect to Scotty. Maybe one day I'll head out. He doesn't live in Houston anymore. I think he went to somewhere out East. Tennessee? Did he go to like Tennessee or something? So maybe I'll visit Scotty in Tennessee one day uh, and do a little collab. I don't know if he's done any collabs before, but our channel's content are so similar, so it would be it would make sense. Dawson Rice Balls, you made a video with tips on buying a car. Any tips on getting a good deal leasing a car, lowering the payments per month? Uh yeah, I can give you some tips. Always look on the specials for the vehicle you're looking at. So if we go to uh, Lexus.com, let me get let me get this on the screen for you guys. There's always advertised rates, and those advertised rates don't include taxes, fees, etc. Try not to pay any fees. There shouldn't, well, there's one, there's a leasing fee that is non-negotiable. I think it's $6.95 on a Lexus. So you have to pay that. That's factored into your monthly payment from the get-go. But dealers make money by marking up essentially the interest rate. It's called the money factor uh, on leases. And it, it's a slippery slope. But when you, if you compare, if you say, hey, give me an, I want this vehicle. You guys are advertising it off with your special rates on your website. I want this. I want this deal. They have to give you the base rate with like no markup. 
There's like no markup on it. It's it's a stripped out rate or a flat rate as they call it. So that's the best way to do it is cross-referencing deals that are going on. Um, so if we click offers here, this will probably be my last thing before I leave you guys. We'll enter my zip code, 68106. Uh, guys, don't creep too much. I could have put in a fictitious one, but you guys know, you guys know I live in Omaha. Um, all right. Here we go. Leasing an ES350, 339 a month. Um, now it's 3K do it signing, but you don't have to do the 3K do it signing. You can say, hey, I only want to put two grand down or whatever you want to do. Um, this includes a $5,000 lease cash. That's a, that's a lot of freaking lease cash there, by the way. That's a good deal. Um, it doesn't include fees, taxes, dealer charges, etc. Now we have to go, okay, here's some more details. It's gonna tell you what the MSRP, um, typically when they do these really low payments, it's on a base car. So we have to look at the MSRP, 41,570. That's pretty much a base ES. So they will try to find a vehicle. They probably don't have one in their inventory. These are mostly made up numbers I'm not gonna lie why are they made up because these base vehicles really don't exist um for most markets they have to excuse me find them out of state and that costs money so more than likely they're not going to have a vehicle at these msrps uh, let me see if i can find one like a 2021 es uh 250 all-wheel drive i want to see what they have here are they doing, uh, what kind of lease cash are they doing? $4,000 lease cash, which is bull crap. It's bull crap. It should be $5,000. But they're like, yeah, no, there's a demand. There's a demand for this all-wheel drive ES. Don't get me started, Lexus. Um, let's look at, I bet the IS is not very good right now. Holy crap. Oh, because that's a 2020. So if you're looking on a, uh, like a outdated model, like the 2020 IS, look, $7,000 lease cash. Crazy deal. There shouldn't be any lease deals on the 2021. Uh, so where's an RX? Why can't I find an RX right now? GS, there's actually leasing deals because there's some GS is still out there. Uh, and look, not that good of leasing. Let's, let's see what, okay. At least it's on a $58,000 MSR GS, uh, because good luck finding any that are below that. Most of them are around 60. So Let's see here. Where are the freaking okay? UXs this past year have started leasing really, really well. $4,500 lease cash. That's a good deal. Uh, I could talk about this all day, but NX surprisingly, it's not leasing. I mean, the, it, the NX lease is well, so it would have been nice to get a little bit more lease cash on $2,500. Um, but let's look at RX only $1,500 lease cash. So the sedans seem to be leasing really, really well, especially the ES. The ES for a 2020 model. Is that what I was looking at? 2020 ES, 2020 IS. So you can find some leftover models that are leasing really well. The problem is most of them are probably spoken for. So let's look at a 21 ES. 3,000 lease cash is decent. All right. <laughs> See a straight Busta or straight Busta, sorry. Um, have a good one. I'll, maybe I'll see you later in the stream. For the MDX, the issue is normally when they tell you you're getting plus 2% than, than what you're approved for by the bank. That's another thing. That's all assuming everything I've said so far is assuming you have really good credit. So leasing is, is a complex ball game. Um, sometimes just going an extra three months or something might get your payment where you want it to be. Uh, yeah, never pay for add-ons like paint protection, dealer doc. Yeah, Sykes Pop's giving some good uh, good information here. Uh, never pay dealer dealer fees or documentation fees. Never pay for aftermarket things that they oftentimes put on the car. You should never pay for that. Um, oftentimes they won't even remove it and they'll give it to you for free because it costs them time and money to remove it. But if you're like, I don't want those things. I'm not going to pay for it. I'm going to go somewhere else. They'll probably just throw it in. ES is a fancy Camry. No, it's a fancy Avalon. Goodness. 
No, but the ES is way better than those cars. I've driven both the TNGA ES and the T, sorry, TNGA Camry and Avalon and the ES is night and day. My, my godfather, my uncle, uh, just what was it two months ago? He had, he had a seven, no, he had an 18 Camry. So new, the new body style, he hated it. It, the doors were like hollow. He did not, it was loud. It was buzzy with that four cylinder engine that he had. And he knew I didn't work for Lexus anymore, but he consulted me. He's like, like, well, there's one here in Lincoln and they have a good deal. And it's the last one. And the, I like the colors. I'm like, yeah, well, they have upfront pricing. You're going to get a good deal on it. So pull the trigger because the, the amount of quality you get jumping from a Camry to an ES in terms of smoothness, quietness, even uh, transmission response is different. Even though on paper it's the same transmission, I don't know what they do. Maybe it's something to do with the software or maybe they bend the transmissions, meaning they have a higher quality transmission reserved for the Lexus ones. It's possible because they definitely feel different uh, compared to uh, the Avalon and the, the Camry V6s. But yeah, ES is a phenomenal vehicle. There's a reason why it's their best-selling sedan. It's arguably the best, one of the best-selling sedans in the luxury market. But um, yeah, yeah. All right, guys, I need to get going. I need to upload my uh, MDX video. So that goes live here in a couple hours. And I'll see you guys in the next live stream. I could be here all day, pretty much here all day with two live streams. So <laughs> I'll see you guys later today. Hopefully you're able to make it. If not, I'm uploading a video right after this, um, going live at 1.30 when the bar ends for the MDX. So you can watch that if you can't make the live stream. Guys, uh, I'll see you guys. See you guys later. Upgrading transmission bo uh, bushings can change response times. Well, there you go. I don't know if that's what they're doing. On paper, they're the same transmission, but Lexus is, they're more responsive, they shift smoother, don't know what's going on. All right. All right, guys. Peace out. Have a good lunch. Whatever you're doing with the rest of your morning, I'll see you guys in a couple hours. Take care. Uh, feel free to continue talking in, this, in the chat. I think that goes on after I end this stream. So, all right, guys. Laters.